somebody new came to that cave and it was not people stronger than David it was people who were weak and destitute and God is not going to always send you somebody who will just wave a little wand over you and get you delivered sometime he has to send people who's in worse shape than you are so that you'll be forced to rise up in faith and operate in the supernatural can you say amen and there are a lot of people tonight that don't have their miracle yet because they're still waiting on somebody who can just come along and give them a little gift box. And that's not the way it works. You have to stir that anointing up that is on the inside of you. And every day, the Bible says specifically, and day by day, there came unto David the poor and the destitute and the lonely. And every day he went to that door, it was that way until one particular moment that God set him up to be promoted and he went to the mouth of the cave and it was Gab the prophet Gab the seer and he said David the Lord has sent me here to tell you rise up and go to Judah and when he went to Judah they were waiting on him with a horn of oil to pour on his head amen I feel like the Lord would have you to hear tonight keep on ministering keep on reaching out keep on delivering people because the hour is 
is coming when a fresh oil, a horn of oil is going to be put upon your head. Can you say amen? One day you're, you're Saul's chasing with you with a javelin trying to pin you against the wall. But the next day you're sitting in Judah with a fresh anointing on your life. Amen. Let's sing it one more time. Well, Saul, he tried to slay me. All my praise to thank me. And my heart upon the willow tree. Oh, but I know silence is rebellion. And the dead praise of the Lord. I put on my priestly heart.
you turn around and love two or three people as you're seated in the house of the Lord tonight. Amen, 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 amen. We worship the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Glory to God. Let's sing one more song. I've with the price. You can stay seated if you'll just worship with us. I just kind of had that on my heart earlier today and I, I want to sing that. to see the difference. You know when, when children, if you don't see children for several years and then you do see them, they look like giants, don't they? You can't get over and you don't see the gradual things. You don't see how you've grown. It's right up under your nose. You're not aware of it. But I'll tell you there is a growth. There's a changing in the spirit. The Lord brings things to my mind. I'm not really a storyteller when I preach and stuff. I just tell things as the Spirit brings it to my remembrance. Amen. And while we were singing tonight, 15 years ago when we first moved into the parsonage across the road, and there was a lot of work to be done, and we were working day and night, hanging sheetrock and so forth, and uh, we had hung all the sheetrock, got it, uh, everything ready, and then another brother was so kind, he had a company, and he came in and sprayed all the textures on it for us. And there was a man that worked with them the whole time, healthy man, strong man, worked every day with them. The whole time they worked, he worked. And they worked around there, oh, I don't know, four, five, six days, something like that. And every time that guy come in the room with me, he'd grin from this ear to this ear. And I didn't know why he was so happy, but he sure had the joy of the Lord on his countenance. And I, he never said nothing to me till the day we all settled up and they were leaving and we were saying our goodbyes. And that brother finally came across the room and said, you don't remember me, do you? And I said, no, I do not. But about five years prior to that, uh, I was invited to go to a meeting and speak in Lake Wales in a men's revival they were having. And that brother was sitting on the seat. I'm telling you, death was all over him. He didn't have, you could see, count the ribs through his shirt. He was so little. 
And while I was beginning to minister to the people, the Lord revealed three different, uh, I believe it was three different major things in his body that had attacked him. And the Lord revealed it by the word of knowledge. And I ministered to the brother and went on my way, never knowing how things had turned out. There he was five years later standing in front of me, healthy as a horse, hanging sheep rock, mud and walls and doing everything. There. I'm telling you, you don't know what passed by you today that will change because it encountered the anointing of God on your life. So we don't get into details. Everybody say it out loud. Don't get into details. There's too much detailing going on. You'll analyze the faith right out of the situation. Come on now. It don't matter how, how, how thick the wall is, how, how ransacked the place is, or whether the property's under taxes. And that don't, none of that matters. That's nothing to do with it. If God has spoken a supernatural word of faith into your heart, you're to stand on the word that God has given you. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. While the Lord supernaturally gave my brother a business license and he, uh, hey, man, let him, uh, gave him a house building permit and, and all of it and he wasn't supposed to have none of it according to the law of the land. But the Lord got in the middle of it. Amen. Gave him a business license. Praise the Lord. What does that? It's the faith of God that moves mountains. So you don't analyze things. Don't get into the details. I could have stayed around and called the pastor and said, what about that brother? What about that brother? But if I really believed he is healed, I wouldn't have checked on him every day. Well, shout me down now. I'd have stood on what I knew was the word of God. Jesus said he what did what? Curse that tree and left it. Yeah. He didn't stand around and wait to see right. if he saw any evidence or not. Watch pots don't boil. Get away from the stove. Walk away in faith. Come on, somebody. Yeah. Leave it with the Holy Ghost. Some of you go to the door too much. You ought to send the Holy Ghost to the door. You're responding too much. Come on now. Your response to must send the Holy Ghost to the door. And whoever's there, he can take care of. Amen. Don't you come down off the wall. You're doing the great work of the Lord. Don't you get down off the wall and listen to all the noise. It's noisy in the outer court. Because a lot of stuff goes on there because it's not as spiritual as the inner court. The inner court's a little bit quieter. A little bit quieter. Hello. You still have to trim wicks and knock off ashes and polish brass and all that. But I'll tell you around me even quieter than that. It's when you enter into the rest where with these calls are weary to rest. That is to say when you come through the old veil of the flesh and get in the spirit realm, what's there? The Shekinah glory of God. Hallelujah. And there, my beloved saints, you don't need another man to stir up your anointing. You walk in the divine grace of God and He every day enables you. Can you say praise the Lord? We're so thrilled to have all of you here. Praise the Lord. I love the holidays, but I love their passion as well. I get my people back. Amen. Amen. Good day today. What a wonderful service this morning. I tell you, the anointing of God was so beautiful in this how people was getting healed. Sister Janet got a word of knowledge even for someone who wasn't in the room, but somebody who knew her was in the room and knew she had the problem. Amen. And we were able to see God bless and touch and heal and direct and speak. Speak to us about Father ministry being able to produce sons of power who can flow in the same giftings and anointings of God. Amen. It is not the will of God that a whole generation pass off the scene without imparting and rebirthing. Amen. The move of the Spirit into the next generation. It must reproduce. Can you say praise the Lord? And I believe with all my heart in this year, God will give us a revival among the young people. Yes. Young people will have a revival. Yes. Now, 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 it may have to come sovereignly, 
because uh, some's a little shy. Yeah. But let me tell you something. God can put the whole youth group on the floor crying yeah. and shaking under the power of God. Amen. And we're going to believe God this year that our youth is going to get the baptism in the Holy Ghost. Amen. Hallelujah. And if they'll get up and out shout me, then I'll rest a little. Amen. I can sit back and just watch God move. But you know that won't happen. If they did take off, I'd run them down. Glory to God. Get in the middle of it with them. Hallelujah. I always said I didn't want my church to shout by their self. If they get started before me, I'm going down there and get in the middle of them. Amen. So glad to see. Amen. Uh, Brother Jim and Sister Jana. And they bring a pupil every time they come. I feel so blessed by that. Some of you were just here the other night. And we had a good time the other night. And we're so glad to see y'all. Brother Jim, greet us tonight, brother. Praise the Lord. you coming yeah. out and sister Arlene yeah. is here she must have got homebound come back down here you better greet us tonight it's good to see you praise the Lord Virginia, praise the Lord. She was here for several, several months with us, and we loved having her, and we sure missed her when she had to go back, amen. But I, I'm believing she's here for a while, amen, and we're going to worship together and get blessed. And of course, Sister Mildred's here, Sister Patricia ain't back there yet. She is, amen. We're so thrilled, and we're glad to, uh, we're glad to have everybody peach back from her home home journey. She made her real home journey for the holidays and she's back in the States, praise the Lord, and we're glad to have her back. Sister Mildred, you may go right ahead. Yes. God is so good. Yes. yes. When Myron passed away in 15, I didn't know what to do. God sent Arlene to me and she said six months, six months. Praise day and night. God. At 2.30 in the morning, I would wake up in panic because y'all, those older people here know, we always would come over during revivals and everything. And yes. It was the worst thing I've ever done, but the Lord heard my cries. Yes. And now, I think he's been to the well, oh, God. God. Amen. Isn't that beautiful? <laughs> Hallelujah. Oh, praise the Lord. I yes, said, go ahead. I said, Mildred, you know what church I'm going to? Said, oh, yeah, <laughs> I'm waiting. I said, I'm going up to uh, Freddie's. Yes. Yes. Um, Amen. Amen. Well, praise the Lord. <laughs> Amen. We appreciate it. They drive from Lake Placid up here, isn't that? Way in Se Seaburn area. Amen. And Sister Ginger's here tonight. Bless you, Sister Ginger. So good to see you. I feel the anointing in the house tonight. I feel the presence of the Lord in our midst. Amen. We would ask you at this time, if you would, 
to get an offering ready to bring to the Lord. We bless you. Thank you so much for everything you do to support this work, this church, this ministry, and most of all that you believe in the kingdom of God and seeing it fulfilled. Amen in this hour. We bless you tonight. Would you come bring your gifts to the Lord? somewhere in there sharper than I am that's the truth she could remember things I couldn't remember God was good to her and led me to her and her to me and we had a wonderful ministry connection and she's been here and preached in this church and had great meetings amen are you glad for Jesus tonight hallelujah would you open your Bibles to the 45th Psalm you know I can't leave it that long I've been having myself a blast preaching through this psalm. Amen. We've been calling these messages, Amen, Touching the King. Hallelujah. Because the psalm is written and says, I have made this things touching the King. Amen. And we're getting in good stuff here because we're getting into this line that says He's fairer than the children of men. And grace is poured into his lips. Can you say praise the Lord? How many of you understand that if you ever get a revelation of Jesus in your life, I'm not talking about a head knowledge of it. I'm not talking about just, uh, 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 just hearing some words that are spoken. But if you ever encounter him in the realm of the spirit, if he ever makes contact with, with your spirit. You'll never be the same again. You won't ever outrun that. In the lowest part of your life, you will remember that you had a vision of Jesus. Now, I could probably go a lot of direction. I think one thing I should say to you was, even in the Bible, they didn't call him an apostle. I mean, no, they didn't all start as apostles. They started as what? Disciples. But they became apostles when? They had to have been able to see him after his resurrection. Well, glory. Because when he resurrected, he did not have the same flesh body. Somebody said, oh, yes, he did. No, he didn't. How come none of them knew him? Nobody knew him until it was revealed to them by the Spirit who He is. Now, I love you, and I don't want you to uh, 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 watch that, uh, hit the block button. Ain't that what you do on Facebook? Hit the block button. I don't want you to hit the block button before hearing me out. But I, I know there's 
statues and pictures and paintings and whatever, and that's fine and beautiful, but that ain't him. You ain't going to know him until, like Paul said, you know him in the power of his resurrection and in the fellowship of his suffering. He is more than a man. Glory to God. He's a spirit. He's a God. He's a father. He's altogether lovely. He's fairer than the children of men. And you can only know Jesus by the Holy Ghost. You can only call Him Lord by the Holy Ghost. And you can't come to Him except the Spirit of God draws you. Amen. You can use any kind of program you want to use to try and make things happen, but unless the Holy Ghost, the anointing of God is present in our services, nobody's going to meet Jesus. Nobody's going to get a revelation of it. Amen. That's the reason why in a great deal of the Holy Ghost Church world, they substituted the power of God for humanism and psychology. Adam trying to help Adam. Can't do it. Say amen, somebody. You can't counsel with Adam. You can't reason with Adam. Hello. There's only one thing you can do. That's get him under the blood. Get him crucified. I am crucified with Christ nevertheless. I live yet not I. Christ lives in me and the life that I now live. I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. That is Galatians 2.20 tells us that. But now, you couldn't see Jesus and know him unless you knew him by the Spirit after he resurrected. Mary thought he was a gardener. He was. He's the great husbandman. Well, praise the Lord. He planted the first garden. And then he planted man in the garden. And then the curse drove man out of the garden. But Jesus went back to the garden. And he prayed until it swept. Glory to God. Became his great drops of blood. And he interceded in my and your behalf. Glory be to God. And rescued us from death and from the hell and from sin and from shame. And gave us back our inheritance in God. And made us to be partakers of his divine nature. Hallelujah to God. He love us. He made us to be partakers of who He is. I'm a child of God. Yes, I am. Everybody say that tonight. I'm a child of God. Yes, I am. Oh, hallelujah. I've been born. I've been purchased. I've been redeemed. I've been reconciled. Glory to God. I'm not my own. I'm bought with a price. Glory to God. I believe I'm shallow. I'm not running around here trying to find my way. And hear me, child of God, neither are you. He knows you by name. He knows the number of hair that is on your head. Woo! Shakala Bahaya, I know you. Maybe I won't read a scripture. I can't, I can't control the Holy Ghost. I won't control the Holy Ghost. the axe to the root. Yes, yes. Hear me now. You're not under a curse. That's right. You're not under no generational curse. That's right. You're a new creature in Christ. All things have passed away. You're not just another byproduct of the same old mess. I'm a child of God. I'm a child of God. I'm a child I'm a child of God. He's the gardener. He pulled out the thorns. See, the thorns was a curse. And he wore a crown of thorns. Not only that, but the book of the Song of Solomon tells us that the bride was a lily, but she was among thorns. She was surrounded by thorns. 
Most would have went on like the Levite. Well, glory and the priest and left it there. But our beloved heavenly bridegroom tore his hand reaching for his bride. He reached in the middle of those thorns and redeemed that which was his. Yes. Somebody say amen. amen. Listen to me, believer. You may have begun in this side when your mama brought you home, laid you in that bassinet and rocked you to sleep. But that ain't when you begun. You begun in him before the world ever was. Oh, you got your you got your genetic makeup, amen, and your pedigree and your genealogy from your earthly path. But honey, you got something besides your earthly makeup. You was chosen with Christ in God before the foundation of the world. Amen. Before your name was ever called on this side, he names you in heaven. Amen. You were his. You were a prophetic word in the mouth of God. And when he got ready, he breathed you out into a body. And that body became alive with your soul. Amen. And let me tell you something else. Put no confidence in this right here. He or she will fail, stumble, fall, or fall, mess up, flub up. Amen. And the only people that tell you they want is self-righteous religious folks, and they need more deliverance than most. Ain't nobody meaner than a religious spirit. Now, let me say it better than that. A religious devil yes. is the meanest thing you'll ever cast out. Yeah. Well, shout me down. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Peter and, and John, all of them, they are shut up in the room. Doors locked. Hid away. The two men on the Emmaus Road, they didn't know him. They walked all the way home with him. He was in another form. Everybody say another form. He's in another form tonight. If you discern his spirit, you will have to get outside of the flesh to do it. You'll have to understand that, that now you better hear me. That same Christ who lived and walked and breathed and talked and walked on the shores of Galilee and healed the sick, raised the dead, and cast out devils, and delivered the oppressed and free. That same I might scream the word same. That same one is right now resident on the inside of you. Hallelujah. Hey, my God. Not another, there ain't but one. Hallelujah. Not another, there's only one. And he's in you. And when the Bible says you're fairer than the children of men, he reaches out. What verse is that for those of you who got your Bibles right there? What verse is that? So everybody can see that. Is it the fourth verse or third? Second. Second. Boy, I ain't doing good. I've been preaching for four sermons on this and still ain't got to the second verse. <laughs> Psalm 45 says in the second verse, He's fairer, thou art fairer than the children of men. Somebody say praise the Lord. Now when I left you the other night, we had went just real briefly before we left here. We had quoted a verse to you. Hallelujah, I've got this one wrote down so I can grab it real fast. In 1 Timothy 1, 17, says, Now unto the King, eternal, everybody say eternal, eternal. immortal, oh, glory to God, invisible, invisible, the only wise God. Oh my God, eternal, yeah. Woo. immortal, yeah. invisible, yeah. and he's the only, my God, there ain't no other God beside him, he's the only wise God, yeah. are you hearing me tonight, he's eternal tells me he's always been, oh, yeah. always been. Brother Roberts used to preach and say he was Abel's sacrifice. He was Noah's rainbow. He was Hezekiah's sundial. He was Balaam's shadow. He was the staff of life. He was honey in the rock. He was the bread. Out of the holy, out of the holy. He was the wine. Amen. He was all of it. He 
was Peter's shadow. He was Paul's handkerchiefs and aprons. Uh, somebody say amen. Yeah. Eternal, eternal, eternal. Beloved saints of God, your Christ, your King, your Savior. My God, you better talk that way every time you talk about it. He's my God. He's my healer. He's my Savior. Ain't none of this D stuff. He's mine. He's mine. That little woman in the song of the psalmist said, Have you seen my beloved? I come to tell you tonight, He's your beloved, honey. Oh, you got a revelation of Him. Glory to God. And the church has got to quit talking about God in some third person form as if somebody better get him right here in the house where he's at and stop all this nonsense. You can't connect with him by the flesh. He's overcome the flesh. He's overcome the world and he's overcome the devil. He's overcome death. He's overcome the grave. He's overcome hell. Overcomer, you're an overcomer. That's right. And you've got to start talking it. You'll never walk it until you talk it. We don't walk with our feet, we walk with our mouth. Yes. How we talk every day. Oh, He's eternal. Everybody shout eternal. eternal. He's the ram caught in the thicket. He's the fourth man in the fire of the furnace. Yes. Come on, somebody. Yes. He's a wheel in the middle of a wheel. Yes. He's Isaiah's king of glory. Yes. Eternal, evermore, always has been, evermore shall be. And eternal don't just mean it's always been, it also means it won't never run out, never run out, never run out, never run out. I'll give you a good verse you quote all the time, but I'm going to add the, the next verse to it. Ephesians 3 20 said, Now unto him who is able to do exceeding, say it with me, abundantly, and above all that we ask or think according to the power that worketh in us. What does the 21st verse say? Unto him be glory in the church by Christ. Jesus throughout all ages, worlds without end. Yes. Right. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You know, we might ought to just go back to preaching the Bible. <laughs> we hear everything else preached. Why don't somebody just preach to me the Bible? I don't want to be protected from God. I love Him. I don't need to be shielded from His uh, mass greatness. I'm great too when I'm in Him. When I find out who He is, I find out who I am because I'm in Him. That's right. Are you hearing me? And people preach today, my God, 45 minute sermons, and they'll never quote a verse of Scripture. No wonder people don't know the word. Are you hearing me? We ought to just get back to the Bible. Just say what the word says. The word says throughout all ages, worlds without end. He's eternal. But at the same time, he's immortal. He's incorruptible. He'll never die. He can't die. And somebody said, well, Jesus died on the cross. He sure did. The flesh did. Did the flesh die as a sacrifice? Yes, indeed it did. That was the sacrifice. Come on now. Oh, his blood was the offering, but his body was the sacrifice. That's right. Hello? But I got news for you, folks. God can't die. So if all of him died, you and me's in a mess. If he, if all of him died, he's just a man like any other. But he's fairer than the sons of men. Hey, he's more than a man. He's the God man. One old preacher said, "The beauty of heaven is God. The beauty of earth is man. The beauty of heaven and earth is the God man." Hallelujah. One hundred percent God, but one hundred percent man. Not half God and half man. All God and all man. So if he's, if he's uh, uh, eternal and he's immortal, then the immortal cannot die. Well, what part of you can't die? Your spirit never dies. Hello? And so what does he do? He says, uh, into thy hands, I commend my spirit. 
And with that said, he what? Gave up the ghost. I ain't but one ghost. And that's the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Oh, yes. I'm looking at holy mansions in here tonight. If you got the Holy Ghost, that's the Holy Ghost. That's right. Praise the Lord. Why did you give him up? So you could get him. That's right. Come on now. The other factor that must play in here, if you get a full revelation of Christ is, and you're going to have to have one so you can say he's fairer than the sons of men. Is nobody killed him. Nobody murdered him. Nobody took his life from him. He laid it down of his own accord. I can't help what Hollywood films. I can tell you tonight, nobody stole nothing from him or murdered him or convicted him. He convicted his own self by doing the will of God. He said, no man takes his life from me. I lay it down of my own accord. And if I lay it down, I will take it back up again. He said to Pilate, there could no power be given unto you whatsoever except it were given to you my Father which is in heaven. Glory be to God. And so because he's immortal, I must understand there's a part of me. Well, glory. That will never die. Never, never, never. Never, never, never. Never, never die. Never die. Never die. I find it very interesting a lot of things that I've heard the saints testify to over the time. One of the greatest things I've heard in recent months was when I listened to Sister Besta Mangan tell about how her father in his 90s, and now she's in her 90s preaching strong, traveling everywhere, wears high heels to preach on Sunday morning. Amen. And uh, she said that her father in all the years that she'd known him never went to bed at night until he had talked in tongues and let the Holy Ghost move through him. And even while he was in the bed and would be on oxygen and so forth, she said, during the night, all during the night, he'd wake her up with his hands in the air, praying in tongues on that bed. And so the night that he got ready to, to pass away, she was sitting with him, and uh, her son, who's their pastor, was sitting at the table working on his message for Sunday morning. When all of a sudden he made this sound and Sister Manga said she knew that he was fixing to pass out of that body. And when she went to him, she said the only way she could describe it was this great big ball of light run right up from his belly and came right out of his mouth. And the minute it did, glory to God, that body was gone. Amen. And Sister Manga turned around and told her son, uh, Anthony, she said, Anthony said that river of life he had inside of it, the Holy Ghost has just left that house. House and now that house is empty. Hallelujah. I want you to know there's a part of you that'll never die. You'll step out of one world over into another world, but you'll not see death. Hallelujah. He's immortal. He's eternal. He's immortal, but he's invisible. I want to spend a little time on the you're not bored, are you? Let me spend a little time with this and tell you that if we're going to be anything in this hour, we are going to have to learn how to see into the spirit realm. Yeah. And you ain't going to do that without having a strong, strong prayer life. Yeah. you got to pray a lot in tongues if you're going to see into the spirit realm. That's what opens it up. Because in the spirit, you speak what? Mistress. Mistress. Now, he's invisible. Now, i got some good scripture on this, but I just ain't got time for a Bible study tonight. I wish I did. But if you want to study these on your own, Romans 1, verses 17 through 20 tells us that invisible things are clearly seen. Well, glory. And I'll put it in my words so that you'll get it easier. When you look around and see creation, you see the visible acts of an invisible God. Praise the name of the Lord. I know He's there when that wind hits me in the face. I know He's there when I cross over into that North Georgia area or I start up into Tennessee and 
I get to the mountains where I want to spend my time. And I look around me and from the road even looks like they're going to swallow the car up because they're so big. In fact, I'm seeing the, invis the visible works of an invisible God. This is why in Job's darkest hour, when every friend he had turned against him, he had lost his family, his children, his, his, his own wife, his own, we could say his own soul, was saying to him, give up, curse God and die. Go ahead and mark it off as a tax return. Amen. Get you a get you a uh, uh, get you a, a tax break. Give up, Joe. It's over. With friends like that, you'll never need an enemy. Come on now. I'm talking about them church going folks. We're saying, Joe, you're a sinner. You made God mad. God don't want nothing to do with you. God's come against you. And them, them crazy men didn't even know that before it had all happened, Satan himself approached the throne of God. And God's the one who said the word, Hast thou considered my servant Job? Because he knew he had a faith in him that couldn't quit and wouldn't quit. And what that are being tried and tested tonight. Let me help you just a little bit. God's got enough confidence in you to know you've got power to overcome yeah. this thing. You're not going to fail. You're not going to fall this time. This time it's real deal. God yeah. has got your number and He's blessed you. He can trust you. Come on, son. Come on. Oh, oh, yeah. have mercy. He's, and, 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 and all of this had happened prior to the fact that there comes all these men and they've talked and just carried on for days on end till they've run out of words to say and finally the only one who had a godly prophetic voice and a whole bunch amen was Elihu and when he got through God began to come to Job in a whirlwind and the Lord said he answered Job from the whirlwind and this is what he began to say where are you? flung the star from my fingertip. Where were you when I scooped out the ocean beds and said to the lion, this star shall thou come and no further. And finally he said to Job, where were you when the morning stars sang together and the sons of God shouted for joy. Amen to God. He was showing Job the invisible can become visible if you have an understanding that everything flows out of the throne. Hallelujah. Everything. And so, are you with me? Yeah. The invisible. The invisible. Romans 1 says that the invisible things are clearly seen. Everybody say clearly seen. Clearly seen. <laughs> now, another scripture you need to get a hold of is Colossians 1, 12 through 19. Colossians 1, 12 through 19. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to God. You know what I think I find that reading? That one's good. Well, they're all good. But I ain't got time to be good all, all night with these scriptures. But you can study them. And they'll bless you. Glory. Colossians 1. What verse did I tell you I'd start with? 12. Giving thanks unto the Father which hath made us meet to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in life, who hath delivered us from the power of darkness and hath translated us into the kingdom of His dear Son, in whom we have redemption through His blood, even the forgiveness of sins. Listen to verse 15 now. Who is the image of of the invisible God. Woo, glory to God. Mighty Lord, I praise you. He's the image of the invisible. What was that word made flesh that dwelt among us? God is a spirit. Yes. Woo, and it's illegal for a spirit to operate in the earth without a body. A spirit has to have a body to operate in this earth and so God got in Mary's womb and created a yes, hey, glory yes, to God hallelujah yes. without the help of the DNA of an Adamic man God supernaturally got in the inside of Mary's womb and imparted the word seed and that seed grew into a flesh body oh my Lord yes. my God and it became flesh and dwelt among us and we've 
to hell his glory as was the only begotten of the Father full of grace and full of truth but look at the rest of it up here spoilness have we all received and grace for grace somebody say praise the Lord he's the image of the invisible God hallelujah now listen to the rest of it he said the firstborn of how many creature every creature that's telling me I'm going to take on his image yes. and his nature and do what he done. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Yes. You know I love you, but you're not here just to build your dream home That's and right. drive your dream car That's right. and have your dream friends. That's right. Besides so that, anybody who's spiritual knows your social life changes every week. Yeah. It does. Because people's on and off again. Yeah. And if you're steady on, you ain't going to quit for nothing. Yeah. So you're going to keep moving. Yeah. You're going to keep moving. Uh -huh. that's, why, that's the only thing wrong with some folks. I tell you, rolling the stone yeah. gathers no moss. Yeah. You getting all that moss on you because you stop and listen yeah. and stop and talk. Yeah. You, know, yeah. you know how to get anybody delivered? Get them out of the crowd they run with. That's right. And you get them delivered. Come yeah. on. And don't just think that's for the world. That's for some of you church folks. <coughs> Them folks you run with, it's always a gospel and a bad bad talking about somebody trying to stir up trouble. That's why you can't never get healed. That's right. You got so many interruptions in the flow. Yeah. They'll right. shout me down. Yeah. Amen to God. He's the firstborn of every creature. That means I must take on his image, right. his nature. His love, His glory, His name, His power, His authority. Come on now. He said, I appoint unto you a kingdom, even if my Father had also appointed unto me. As my Father has sent me, even so send I you. As He was in this world, so are we. Hallelujah. We have something to do in the kingdom of God. It's not over yet. It's just getting wound up good. It's not about to be through. God is summoning an army of the Lord in this hour and equipping it with power from on high. Amen to God. Be not shaken in thy mind tonight. But take secure and new footing uh, on this word that is entered into your spirits. Uh, and know that thou hast overcome the wicked one. Because I have overcome, saith the Lord. And have anointed thee in this hour uh, to stand true and to stand firm. Uh, and to overcome all uh, that shall come up before thee. Thou hast power in thy hand. Thou hast power in thy tongue. Uh, I crown thee with loving kindness and tender mercy. I'm a anointed thee with fresh oil for this day saith the Lord so walk not with thy head drooped over, walk not in a bit over and a shameful way but stand up right in this hour and shine for thy light is come and the glory is upon thee saith the Lord <laughs> oh my God let, let, listen to verse 16. For by him were all things made. Yes, Created. That which is in heaven. i got to be careful. I've lost that page. That's my Bible. And I don't want a new one. Don't get me a new one. Uh, all things that are in heaven and in earth. What's that next line say? Visible and invisible. You're going to get granted access to the visible. And the invisible, right? That's right. You can't solve nothing by what you see. You have to look at the things which you can't see. That's right. If somebody said, how do I look at the things that I can't see? You've got to get in the Spirit to look in the things that you can't see. Somebody ought to know tonight by, by the Word of God, by preaching you have heard. That if God is a spirit, you know He is because John 4 tells you He's a spirit and He's seeking somebody to get over there where he's at. In the realm that is called what? Spirit. Worship him in the... <laughs> and in the truth. Amen. 
And what happens is, whether it's visible, invisible, whether it's thrones, dominions, principalities, or powers, all things were created by Him and for Him. I sure like this one. He is before all things, and by Him all things consist. Good yes. Lord. Why, the very scientists, astrologers of this hour tells us that things are in such a close order of running in the galaxies of the earth that if one thing were to move the slightest, there would be an, an atomic collision and which would result, oh glory to God, in a catastrophic explosion that blow the whole thing up and none of them knows how for millions of years it's continued on the same path without ever failing or moving off its course. I know why. He holds it together by the word of his power. Yes. Yes. If he can take care of that, now listen to this preacher and love me. If he can take care of that, he can pay your $400 rent. He can yeah. take care of your sore foot. He can heal your yeah, cat that's sick. He can take care of, come on somebody. Yeah. He can make a way for you to get a water pump. He yeah. can make a way for that back to straighten up. He can get away with them migraines you have. He can take that glory of God. He can take all that glow coming out of your eyesight. He can take that, watch that other one, that macular uh, degenerate. He can take all of that out of there and give you 2020 in the year 20. 2020, hallelujah. Oh, glory to God. He come a shadow of Let God do something for you. Don't float down this year and run with the same old bunch and do the same old stuff over and over again. Rise up in God and be accounted for in this hour. Get something in you that's fairer than the sons of men. Hallelujah. Well, glory, I'm having myself a ball tonight. Amen. He's eternal, immortal, and invisible. Come on now. I've got a few more. Now I'll rush through. Where is that one at? Anyway, I get right and everywhere when I get carried from God. I, you couldn't read what I have. John 1 18, I think it's a verse. It says, No man has seen God at any time but the only begotten of the Father who is in the bosom, come on now, of the Father. He hath declared Him. He hath declared Him unto us. Amen. Now if I had an amplifier in my hand, I'd read that to you. I want you to hunt it, hit the amplifier and read it because it'll bless your soul when you read it. What it simply means is He's manifested him. He's unveiled him. Yes. Glory to God. Yes. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Yes. See, if you read it in the natural, you'll say, oh well. And people do it, don't they? They've preached it for you. Oh, no man can know him. No man can come to him and approach him. And no man can see him. And, mm -hmm. oh, and what do you do? You go to church and listen to that. And then you grow up and teach your children. Yeah, come on. Amen. Oh, God is so mystical and so high and so holy. You can't think you crazy. Only thing God's ever wanted to do was rejoin himself. Yeah, that's right. With his people. Yeah. So that he could walk in them, talk in them, live in them, yeah. move in them, and breathe in them. That's yeah. right. Are you hearing me? The church has got to get away from preaching that we're here, he's there, and oh, what a gulf between. No, it ain't done it. Jesus is more than a man. Hallelujah. He dwells in us by the Holy Spirit. Somebody yes, say amen. Yes. What is the Holy Ghost? It's a resurrected spirit of Jesus Christ. It's that which came up out of the grave. And Romans 8, 11 tells you what, if that same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he will do what? He'll change and quicken and make alive even your mortal. Even your mortal body. You know what that tells me? That tells me I'm getting ready to see the invisible. Yes. I'm getting ready to see the invisible. There's another wonderful scripture in Timothy. Now the one I started with tonight was 1 Timothy 1.17. 1 Timothy 6, 15 through 16 said, He is the blessed and only, I must say only. Oh. He's the only potentate, the King of kings, the Lord of lords, who only hath immortality, dwelling in the light which no man can approach unto 
whom no man has seen, come on now, yeah. nor can see. Now the average guy come along, read that scripture, and say, oh, that's it, I'll never see God. And then, no, honey, listen to me. Listen, listen, and listen good. He said, no man, but you more than a man. That's right. You got something on the inside of you that's greater is he that is in you, come on, than he that is in the world. Don't you sit back in your rocker and say it's all over. God's going to show you something. God's going to reveal something to you. Amen. Amen. What do you want? Do you want a family? Do you want a ministry? Do you want something like that in your life? Well, go after it. It's yours for the taking. You're his child. Hallelujah. You're his child. He is enthralled and enthralled when you decide that you have a father who is in love. Glory to God. All the overwhelming, reckless love of God tonight. Amen. Amen. So this, and then uh, the, the, the granddaddy of all scriptures as it concerns this, and I'll close with this one, is 1 Timothy 3.16. And without controversy, great is the what? Mystery of godliness. God was manifest in the flesh. Yeah. <laughs> Somebody said, what is the mystery of godliness? God was manifest in the flesh. You can't fathom that, so don't try. There you go analyzing again. Leave it alone. Oh, glory. He's God in the Father. God in the Son. God in the Holy Ghost. But before you go separating and slinging three everywhere, read, sing the rest of it. He's got all three, but he's in one. Can you say amen? And the right and proper teaching of that is always, yes, in the Godhead there is a Father. Yes, in the Godhead there is a Son. Yes, in the Godhead there is a Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. But no, they are not three separate entities and people that exist on their own individually. These three are manifestations of the one God. That's right. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, glory to God. And secondly, I would tell you it is improper to say that the Lord Jesus is second to anything because Revelation 1 calls Him first and last. I don't ask you to believe me. What I say is nothing. It's the Word of God I'm preaching to you tonight. He's the first. He's the last. When John saw the throne, glory to God, he saw one on that throne. But that one on that throne could be whatever he needed to be. He could be a father to the orphan. He could be, hey, glory to God. And if we're down here needing redeeming because we fell into the similitude of Adam's transgression, then he can be a son so he can come and deliver us. But then we ain't just got salvation. We went on into another dimension. We got the Holy Ghost. We got the Holy Ghost. Amen. Hallelujah. So great is the mystery of God. And what is this without controversy? You can't tear it apart. Hallelujah. You can't turn it up. It's always been. It's eternal. Yeah. Hallelujah. It's the divine Godhead. It's the deity of God. Yeah. Well, glory. Hallelujah. Christ in you. Yes. There's a hope. Yes. A glory tonight. Yes. You're possessed with hope. Yes. That's why that any human being, most all human, beings even in the gutters of life tonight who've lost everything at the least little breath on their candle flame they'll say maybe I can get out of this maybe it will turn around maybe this isn't the way it's going in somebody said what does it you got hope yeah. You're a prisoner of hope. Yeah. You've got hope on the inside of you. Yeah. Something in you, you're born and bred by God to believe you'll make it. You'll yes. overcome. Yes. You'll come up. Amen. Praise the <coughs> Lord. So without controversy, great is the mystery of God. God was manifest in the flesh. 
He was uh, justified in the spirit. He was seen of angels. He was preached to the Gentiles. Come on now. He was believed on in the world. And he was received up in the glory. My God. That's the mystery of godliness. God left the throne, came to the earth, became a man, redeemed man, preached this redemption. Yeah. And you love his platform. You know where he preached it, don't you? He preached it in hell. Yeah. Yeah. Now shall. Yeah. Well, glory. He preached to prisoners yeah. whose spirits had been held captive. Come on now. You yeah. said, said, I want to preach. Where do you want to preach? I want to preach like Jesus. Where do you? Yeah. He'll put you in the middle of something. Yeah. And it may not smell good and look good and feel too good. Hello? Yeah. But when he preached and started out, you know what happened? Everybody he preached to. I said, everybody he preached to got resurrected yeah. and called him out. Now you won't like this one, but it's true. It's in your Bible. He went on into glory to offer his blood on the mercy seat. Come on now. When he said, handle me, he didn't say, a spirit hath not flesh and blood. He said, a spirit hath not flesh and bone. He didn't have no blood. He poured it all out on the mercy. How was he alive? Because he wasn't in a natural body anymore. He was in a glorified body. Amen. Well, glory to God. Hallelujah. So what are you a part of tonight? You're a part of that same resurrection. And you all are getting ready to see the benefits of a resurrected life. Things that you thought were gone forever are fixing to be restored back to your hand. You who thought it was over, it's four days, it's stinking, there's a stone in the way. But as he said, I am the resurrection and the life. Glory to God. Let's stand up and shout a while tonight over it. Glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> Oh, glory to God. Well, he's God in the Father. He's God in the Son. God in the Holy Ghost. God all three in one. And I know God is God. And God don't never change. I know God is God. And He always will be God. He's got up on the platform. He's not back at the door. He's got in the amen corner. He's got all over this floor. I know God is God. And God don't never change. God is God. And He always will be God. God that gave us Jesus. God that brought us out. The God who rules in heaven, God that makes me shout, I know God is God, and God don't ever change, I know God is God, and He always will be God. God that healed my body, God that saved my soul. Bless you, lay hands on you under the anointing before you leave here tonight. Hallelujah. Come expecting the presence of the Lord to move on.
cross of it. You get ready to see resurrection on a line you ain't never seen it before. I'm telling you, God's going to restore, 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 restore. And I don't mean with a bunch of broke down stuff. I mean with the finest of the week. And when I was laying hands on you, I heard the Lord say that. The finest of the week. You watch what God did. I mean, that's all about right the anointing. You all are like a magnet to the favor of God. You watch what happens. Watch what I'm telling you. It's going to be the finest of the week. Come on, praise Him tonight. Heaven. to bless you and heal you tonight. Amen. Amen. 
Amen. Amen. Drunk on their spirit. Inebriated, filled, intoxicated, submerged, saturated. Amen. Thank you, Lord Jesus. I believe that's why the Lord in the in the nineties when that revival hit, I believe God done that just to stir up the hunger. Because we just couldn't wait to go get back under the presence of God. All we wanted to do was be in church. Amen. And and we were raised that way. And I have a hard time with the adjustment of this age. Because it seems like people's more happy with how much less you can go. Isn't it the truth? And uh, hallelujah. Uh, I can I, I just tell you revival is something that that's of the past as far as not the spirit of it but the long meetings because you can't open church up every night with three people, four people, five people. That isn't even ethical with the with the funds to do so. But I somehow got it in my spirit that the Lord is putting a new flame in His people. And I believe you know what's going to happen, don't you? The services are going to get so good people's afraid that if they miss, they're going to miss something. And my granddaddy used to preach and say, if you really want something to happen, just pray till you catch fire and the rest of folk will come just to watch you burn. Amen. And that's what he used to preach to us. He'd say, get in a circle. You know what he'd get up and say when folk got to, dragging their feet and running around and it was time to get in and gear and go with it? He'd say, get in a circle, get in a center, draw your circle and pray till revival shows up in that circle. Amen. And he said, then somebody else will come along. You'll have to draw a bigger circle. And a bigger one until you've had a move of God. Yeah. Amen. And the thing is that this is such a time for revelation of the word of the Lord. And I'll tell you another thing, folks. You can't be afraid of what you ain't never heard. Because God's going to say some things in this hour that Granny didn't know and Uncle Bill didn't know and and, and uh, besides that, they're all in the graveyard. Why don't you let the dead bury the dead? How come you let the grave tell you what to believe? We're in the living, the land of the living. And God is speaking something in this hour. Praise the Lord. And it'll be a good thing if you go ahead and do this because I'm sure the Lord's getting ready to do it to you anyway. You would do yourself good to just run everything in your life that you believe about God through the raw acid test of the Word of God. Amen. If it ain't in the book, I don't care how many of your relatives right. said it. And I don't care if your favorite preacher preaches it. Amen. If it ain't it, including the one that's got the microphone. Amen. Glory to God. Show me it ain't in there. And I'll drop it right out of my vocabulary. Show me it is in there and I'll shout it from this pulpit. Amen. But I'm interested in what the Spirit has to say to the churches in this hour. We're in a time we've never been in before, but it's a wonderful time. It's a good. You don't want good old days. You're crazy. You don't want to go back that. You don't want no air, do you? You don't want to have to uh, uh, sit on uh, sit in brush arbors and sit on slap benches. You now you won't be comfortable. Sure you do. Don't tell nobody that. We don't believe a word of that. You'd surely rather be cool than to sweat, hadn't you? Amen. Or you could be like me and sweat in all weathers and all buildings and all rooms. We went to eat lunch today and I was hot and everybody was cold and I turned the air on and oh, glory to God. And got it real cold and then I got cold and had to turn it up. Amen. But I ain't been cold tonight. I felt the fire. I felt the glory. I felt the fresh touch of the Spirit of God. Amen. Pray this week. Pray for a greater manifestation of the gifts. Especially the revelation gifts. The word of knowledge, the word of wisdom, and the discerning of spirits. Pray for you to have visions, dreams, revelations from God. 
Ask God every night before you go to bed, turn your dream world over to the Holy Ghost. Decree before you lay down at night, I will not have fearful, antagonizing dreams that drive me crazy. I will dream spiritual dreams. I will see what God wants me to see. Can you say amen? And pray that the Lord, listen, God will even let you hear His voice in the little cashier checking you out. You can hear Him blowing through any wind that will yield to Him. So pray the Lord don't let you miss nothing this week that He wants to say to you. Can you say amen? Oh, do you, does your heart feel clean and pure and holy? And do you feel like God's touched you fresh tonight? Amen. And, and moved on you. We want to bless you. We thank you for being here. We will be back together Wednesday night at 7.30 and we'll get into work together. Amen. Amen. God for deliverance. I believe in deliverance. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, glory to God. How many feel a little tipsy under the power tonight? You all look to me like you're a little bit still under the power. Amen. We bless you tonight. We love you in the name of God.